Hello and welcome back to Sports for Dummies. In today's episode, we're doing a preview of round six for the AFL season. An absolute blockbuster ahead. I mean, arguably, Johnny has to be the best round of the season so far, right? This is absolutely this is one of the best rounds I can remember start to finish in a while. That uh, like there's there's teams at the top going against each other. There's teams at the bottom going against each other. A few teams of yeah, injuries really taking a hold of a couple of people's seasons. We're going to learn a lot. We're at, we're at round six. So a quarter of this, you know, quarter away through the year, we're going to learn a lot. We're going to, the, the ladder's going to start to take shape. Let's get into it. So we have first cab off the rank, as you can see down here, St Kilda and the Doggies. Now the teams have been released for these. So you've got 11th versus 12th. So very much sitting, very similar. Last time these two teams met, though, St Kilda definitely had the measure and bet them by 51 points. Johnny, do you want to jump into the list for the St Kilda Football Club? Yeah, absolutely. So in the back line, so well, first of all, Zach Jones in, Max King out. Max King's hurt his knee, cleared of any structural damage though. Um, in the back line, you've got Cordy, Wilkie, Battle. And then you've got in the half back line, Wanganin, Malira, Sinclair, Stocker. Centre line, Ross, Hill, Burns. Half forward line, Sharman, Owens and Higgins. Full forward line, Caminetti, Memory, Wilson, and following Marshall Steele and Windega. And on the bench, Jones, Butler, Philippou, Garcia, and Bona. For the doggies in the back line, you've got Richards, Jones, O'Donnell, half back line, Duray, Kermis, and Johannesson. Center line, you've got Williams, Trelaw, Gallagher, half forward line, Vandermeer, Norton, West, full forward line, Darcy, Lobb. Waitman, sorry, and Lobby is a big inclusion there, I yeah. might just add. That is probably their biggest one. Out, however, goes Hugo Hagen, Liberatore with concussion, and Baker was omitted. In the bench, you've got Bramble, Dale, Garcia, Harms, Sanders. On the emergency, you've got Caleb Daniel. Caleb Daniel as an emergency. Yeah, 26 in, in the resi some we can do. Jones and Poltar. So very, very interesting selections by the doggies. They're under a lot of scrutiny for that. Seems like they think they've got a top four list. They definitely do not when you go through that team and have a look. But just on this, who's getting up? Because this, this is, is I mean, this is a this is a, this is a hard one. Both sides are two and three. So you don't want to go two and four um, and have a couple of games, you know, away from the pack. Um, St Kilda, both sides have been inconsistent. I mean, St Kilda yeah. started the season so well, um, went to the Cattery, just got beaten, um, took out Collingwood and looked really good while they they did it. You know, their movement off half back. back. And then game against Essendon really just ruined what I was thinking about them. You know, they, they controlled that game and they lost it from a mental standpoint. They almost lost to a um, Richmond who, you know, who were just horrible. Mm. Um, got back to some form against a really good GWS side. Um, they've just got to get their ball, the ball in for St Kilda win. Just get what they, I mean, Bradley Hill had 33 last week. Sinclair had 22. Um and Wanganeen had 19. These are elite ball users. We're playing at Eddie Hat or Marvel. This is what they have to do because the dogs are, you know, the dogs are going to want to come back too. Um, Ugal Hagen out is huge because he could have quite easily kicked a bag. He looked, he was sensational against the Bombers. Yeah. Rory, I mean, Rory Lobb, can he stand up? My problem with the dogs is, I mean, taking out Libba, he's just tough. Yeah. Um, well, Saints, you saw it. The Saints injury list, though, like this is starting to. You got Allison out for two weeks, Hunter Clark out for two weeks, um, Brad Crouch out for three to four, Patty um, Liam Henry out for three to four, Max King's out, Mason Woods out for a couple of weeks. Their injury list is starting to put, pile up. It's a very hard game, this one. Um, from the coaching and defensive standpoint of St Kilda, I'm leaning towards them. Um, the dogs are oversized up forward. And they're undersized down back line. Um, but Max King going out for St Kilda, where, where's, their, where's, their go- where's their goals going to come from? No, memory's, memory's good. Um, I mean, they're going to rely, I guess, Jack Higgins. He always kicks a few. Bont, Bont and Bont McRae, Trelaw, do they take over? Like Bont, was, Bont played the worst game of, the last, of his last five years. Yeah. Um, 
Statistically, this team mat- they match up exactly like pretty much identical. You go through the disposals, the marks, the clearances, yeah. the tackles, they're very similar. So it's going to be they're very they're quite similar. I mean, it makes sense why they're eleventh and twelfth. Uh, it's a I hard th- one. I, th- I think I think I'm going to go. I mean, because then the midfield. So you got Jack Steele, Windager, Ross. I think I think the dogs are going to get up. Gee, flipped on that. I mean, I, and I don't, I don't disagree. I think Max King being injured and they're bringing in Zach Jones. I mean, how are you yeah. going to combat um, someone like Max King? I, I have a hunch. Yeah, I think if Bont plays really, really well, their midfield is just going to be too good. Yep. Being that they're both playing at Marvel. Yep. I think doggies will get that one. Uh, how much do you reckon they're going to win by? Uh, doggies by 18 points. 18 points. Yeah, I reckon it's going to be a pretty close game. Yeah, it, it will. It'll be low scoring. I don't think it's going to be a shootout. No. Uh, but doggies to win. That brings us to Adelaide Crows take on the, well, I was going to say the Mighty Bombers, but it's not the Mighty Bombers. The Essendon Football Club, who, this is a true test. This is a big, big test for these guys. This is this is big. This is big for everyone. So Matty Crouch goes out with suspension um, for the Crows. Um, Adelaide are back in form, which is really cool. They, I mean, they took out Carlton. They played for me being a Carlton supporter. Um, I get. I, I give them all full credit because they yeah. they've moved the ball well. They've they're going to have their tails up. They're at home. Walker was absolutely sensational. Like he, he kicked four, he set up just as many. He was involved in just as many. Um, and what they did, Adelaide, they put Rankin, Rochelle in the midfield. Like at the centre bounces, they were there. Rankin was huge. It was one. Of, that's the best game I've ever seen him play. Yeah. To, um, twenty three goals, um, touches, kicked three goals. He actually missed a few on the full. Um, biggest problem for Adelaide, I guess, is their back line, but. Keane was good. Michael Annie's been good. Worrell's intercepting against Carlton was awesome. Um, I tell you, he's been good though. Uh, uh, he's, I mean, they've named him on the wing, but he's been more half back. He's hinge. Um, he's starting to become a weapon, left footer, and he gets more of the ball than more because normally half backers get just uncontested. He's actually getting his own football. Um, what, what do you think of the Bombers, mate? Well, I mean, just based, I mean, Adelaide coming off a good win against Carlton. Their first win for the season. They're one and four, fourteenth on the ladder. Essendon, three and two, have not had the easiest draw, if I'm being honest. But they're very similar in who they've sort of versed. I just have a hunch. We've always had the the last five games against Adelaide. We've won. Yeah. I just think with Ben Mackay down back, matching up against Walker, mm-hmm. you jinx yourself last week saying if he kicks a bag. That's when they win if he kicks well, more unle- than three. He's going to be unleashed now. Yeah, but I, I really hope that we can play a real good shutdown role on him. And it's, I mean, it's been proven. I mean, Frio got up against Adelaide and, I mean, uh, arguably, you know, I mean, Pierce is one of the best in the league at the moment to, to shut down. But Mackay's, you know, doing a good job down back for us. That's a ma- that's a matchup. Yeah, it's a great matchup Harry, for us. Harry, Harry and Tex. Very good matchup. That's going to be crucial because if they had another Tex Walker or like if they had the duo like what Carlton do, it would be a bit of an issue. But I think that we can eliminate him and take him out of the game. Our Bombers, if Stringer can be firing, he's very much our temperature gauge. He just needs to play well and I think I think does we'll he, get the job does, done. Does he play well away from Melbourne? <sighs> Not that's, sh- my, that's my problem because he didn't touch it against Port. I think Kick he started well in the first quarter, but he didn't get, he didn't touch it. He had two goals. I mean, he didn't play his best game, but who the hell played well that day? You know, Nick Martin and Merritt were getting a lot of the ball, but they weren't doing much with it. So I think that was just an overall, like we said, we didn't play well that second quarter. We learned a lot last week. Against Port, we definitely just let them guns blazing, blaze away and and no good. So I look personally, I think this is gonna show a lot about Essendon and where they sit. If you're following the premiership, Mental, it's going to show mentality. you know will they get back on? They'll be back on deck if they really, you know, if they can win this, we're four and two. I think we'll be in a good, you know a good stead. And I think for the bombers, it's just bit, like we said, we brought in a lot of new recruits. I was bad on Goldie. I know last you know, week before against Port because we absolutely got touched up. I think it's going to be good to see how we play 
over in Adelaide against a team who probably have a mental edge right now. I think going into this game, going, you know, we just beat, we've just beaten Carlton. Yeah, you know, we, we're up there. We can. And do you're it. at home, and this all you need is a little spark. I mean, Brisbane got their little spark, and they're right back in the hunt. Adelaide scored the most, um, you know, points for last year. Um, Rochelle, Rankin, Walker were all important. Fogarty was the only poor was the only poor one, but he set one up. I, I think they're just going to be they're going to have too much firepower um, against you, and I reckon Adelaide by four goals. You reckon Adelaide? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. Fair enough. Adelaide, Fair enough. Adelaide on that one. No, that's. I mean, it's funny because you look at it and they beat a team like Carlton. I think it's a very level field. I think it's going to be a hard one, but I think Essendon are going to win this. Okay. Card, I'm not normally confident on them, but I just know we match up well. Now, I know the last three games we played were at Marvel, but I still just think we're going to have the edge. Yeah. So that right. brings us to. Well, this is arguably. I mean, there's a lot of matches of the round. Collingwood and Port Adelaide. What an absolute game this is going to be, guys. You've got. <coughs> sorry, pardon me. You've got 13th on the ladder, Collingwood, who have. You know, reignited and won their last two games against Port Adelaide, who are just humming along four wins, one loss in third position. I mean, the last few times these two have met, I mean, Collingwood won over in Port by two points. And realistically, they've kind of had the edge since they've won, they've won the last three games that they've played. So, last, so, so la, I mean, last year was an absolute fucking cracker. Um, yeah. That went, that went, that went to the right, the wire. Um, Ported had a few injuries, and Collingwood went over there and won. Um, we're going to see another cracker today. Collingwood is back in the hunt, um, right back into some form. Um, Port Adelaide are going just beautifully. Um, looks like they're learning from uh, their mistakes that they lost against Melbourne. Yeah. Um, Col- Collingwood is an interesting. So Nathan Murphy retired during the week um, due to concussion, concussion, which is also sad. Um, well, Collingwood have done really well um, in the last two weeks, and they start against Brisbane. Put Dacos in the put on the halfback line. Just put him on. Noble has provided a lot of run. Um, Moore looks like he's back to his best in terms of just just hunting, halving contest. Doesn't have to be too silly with it. Port, uh, the thing with Port Adelaide though, they just look so. Everyone just looks on at the moment. They just look like their midfield, their synergy, everything. Huge. Marshall, that, Dixon, they're all playing their role down back. Like it's just that's just been huge. It's a hard yeah. Under, under, that under, car. Under, he's the smallest one of those key defenders, and he's been absolutely huge. I don't think enough's made about Charlie Dixon's performance after halftime against Pierce. Because Pierce has dominated everyone he's played. Yeah, he did a really good he job. He kicks two big goals in the last quarter after being well beaten in that first half. Butters and Rosie are killing it. Francis Horn, Horn and, sorry, Horn and Francis is a bull but can use the football. Um, well, Wines Houston was off crashing the back. Beast. Um, Houston off the back. The, off Lear. the back, Farrell. Burton. I know you don't rate Radigalier. I just think he can be isolated. He's great if he can have a run on it, but as a one-on-one footballer, he's the worst thing I've seen. Um, they just look too good. However, my question mark on Port Adelaide, this whole process while they've been up the last three, four years, mm. is their mentality when it really matters. There's always been something that's missing. Now, they they, they showed a bit of dip against Freo. And they were behind. How are they going to go at the MCG? I got the pies by 16 points. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I was leaning towards Port. Fuck this. It's funny. This you look at really you look at the you like, look at Port are going so well, but I think Colling, I think Collingwood are back in it, and I think they're going to get the chocolates. They're going to have the crowd. They're gonna have a big. How does Paul go at the MCG? And I'm, I'm not sold on it yet. They're looking as good as any, but they looked as good as any last year. Mm. And I was proved right. I just, yeah, I've, I've got the pies. Pies for me. I'm gonna go the opposite. I'm gonna go Port. Yeah. <clears throat> I just think based on, they'd have a big amount of belief right now. Four wins, one loss. They know they're going into. 
you know, they're going into what would you call Collingwood's den? I was going to say, you know, how you call it the Lions Den. It's not the Lions Den, but they're going into the you know the, the MCG, the, the G, which is going to be quite hard to beat. But if there's a time where they should win this game, it's now. Yeah, and I think, I mean, they've they've got a ridiculous list at the moment. It matches Collingwood. Oh, they're plays, just, they're on paper. You look at that depth. game on paper, they're better. I was going to say their depth in the midfield. Yeah, they should they they should win. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how much. I'm not going to predict, but I just think it's just going to be a win for them. Okay. I couldn't tell you how much by. Okay. That brings us to Carlton versus the Giants. Well, <laughs> both teams have been absolutely fucked, haven't they? Um, <laughs> Sard's out for six weeks. Chera, out, Chera McGovern, two to four weeks. Motlop out two to four weeks. We are in big trouble. Um, Cunningham's hurt himself with a calf, like still injured with a calf. Caleb's out. Um, Fogarty's out. It, uh, we got decimated. That's how, how important that Adelaide game was because of the run that we have. Now, the only thing... That, which is which is really weird. Sorry, I, I paused here because I'm um, reading this thing. They have Sam Taylor in. He's definitely not playing. He's concussed. <laughs> um, they've got him out and Cox. Um, I think Callum Ward will come in for Coniglio, yeah. um, which is huge for them. Um, Sam Taylor is probably has been the best defender all year. One yeah. on one intercepting, fantastic. Which means that's a ma- this is going to be a game. Of the coaches with Ke- with Kelly with um Taylor out because the twin towers of Mackay and Kerno they could be too now now Buckley's got to do it himself and they're a fantastic backline duo but who's going to do it for down back for Carlton so, losing Sard and losing well McGovern? this is this is why I said it's a coaching it's a coaching thing so we dominate these center clearers getting in quickly good ball movement we could monster them pretty early. My concern is our back line. We, and the problem with Carlton last week was we kept bombing it in long and bombing it in long. We'd get all the ball, but we didn't have any users. Mm. Kono Saad are our best users off the back line and Cher is our best user in the midfield. Um, how, how, do, how are we going to, I guess, counterattack this? It'll be interesting to see who we get back in. Um and they love – GWS love us. They, I mean, they smashed us last time when we were both going head-to-head. What do you call actually, it a smashing? I mean, they won they were up 32. By, they were up by 65 points yeah, and then took everyone off with three yeah. minutes to go. We, <laughs> it was one of the biggest – it was the biggest slaughter I've ever seen. It wasn't close. I've they, seen bigger they, than... they, they quit. Yeah, I'm, I've seen bit of the, bigger than 60 I'm points, not, I'm Johnny. not arguing about that. The point was they flogged us and then they took everybody off. It was terrible. I and the, Whitfield, Ash, Iden, Perryman, they're just going to pick us apart. They're just on this. Adelaide did it. Adelaide did it. And these guys are better users than Adelaide. Marvel, no conditions. Um, Riccardi and Hogan are moving well. Green's going to have a field day because who's going to play on him? Because we've lost our, we've lost our back, we've lost our any sort of back line. Problem with Carlton is we've brought Pitnet has to stay now. Our clearance game got better, but we've been number one for turnovers, and that's why we're winning. We lost the turnover the turnover game because we weren't actually getting our entries from the back six. We don't want that now because we've got all those players. I was going to think we might have, you know, this this hero win, but they're going to bring in Callum Ward for they'll bring in Callum Ward for Cogs, which so they yeah, only we'll, really he had got a good Taylor. game in the VFL yeah. as well, so it's going to be hard for you guys to. We're not really... <clears throat> on a list, they didn't... You, you guys have been slaughtered with injuries yeah. again. But I was thinking maybe because of the couple that they had out, but Callum Ward sort of replaces Cogs. They've only got Taylor out. Um, I think Giants by five goals. Yeah, I mean, six versus first. It's Carlton four wins, one loss. GWS humming along with five wins. Now, this is a test for them because they're coming up against a team who are beaten but have potential to very much play with heart and actually win. And I think the one thing that you can say is Cripps has definitely done that. You've overcome a lot of adversity with injuries from the start of the year. 
can you do it now? It might be asking a bit like, much. I feel like it's just piling up. Yeah, it is. It's it's added on. I think you guys started the year knowing you had a lot of injuries. You got players back. Now it's just piling, and it's you're losing more. And it's a really hard place to be. I do think the Giants will get this one. It will be closer than you think, though. I don't think it'll be five goals, though. It could be a big upset, though. I think that Giants would be, have that had a big, be, ju- but Giants have had an easy run. Aside from Collingwood at the start. They have had an easy run. This is what people don't remember. They've played yeah. three of the bottom four t- sides. Yeah, but you could have... Okay, look at how many games they've won in their last 16. Yeah, I'm not denoting that like, they're a good so team. So you say they had an easy run, but they beat everyone but Collingwood last year in their run home. Um, I Yeah, I would love a miracle, but I can't see it. You're boring, mate. For the viewers, everyone would love you to just say Carlton will win. We won't. <laughs> we won't. We're realists. We're gonna get. We're gonna about? get embarrassed. It's gonna be yeah, horrible. Okay, fair enough. That brings us to this one's gonna be an absolute cracker. Brisbane take on Geelong at the Gabba. They go game. up to the Lions. Then this is a true test. Is Geelong as good as what we think they are? Because they have been humming along. They haven't really f- had to fight anyone hard. They're now going up to Brisbane. Who have turned it on, got a good win last two. Up and are Brisbane back? Are they back? This well, is their question. I mean, on the form guide, let's have a quick little look at that. So it's 10th versus 2nd. I can't believe I'm even saying that, you know, Geelong should just pump them really when you look at that on a ladder statistic. But Lions have two wins, three losses, Geelong humming along five. Last time they met was at the Lions then and... The Lions got up by 11 points. The time before that was at the Lions Den as well, and they got up by 46. The time before that was at the Cattery, and they got absolutely pumped. Well, Geelong pumped them, but it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. They did play twice last year, and Lions had the edge on them both times. Am I reading that right, that they played twice? At Brisbane. At Brisbane. That doesn't even make sense. <sighs> That makes round sense. one, round nineteen, big gap. Yeah, but how can you have two home games? It's a bit unfair, isn't it? Well, it was like Essendon. Oh. Essendon had three of the last three against Adelaide at no, home. No, no, no. But you don't have. Yeah, but they were different years. Yeah, they're different how, years. That that doesn't make sense. That's not right. How can you play two home games against the same side at the Gabba? Let's look. That's bizarre. Oh no, that was a dip switch. That was that. The fuck is dip switch? <laughs> Where the hell is that? <laughs> oh, is. Is that, 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 that would have been, been Gatherround. That makes sense. Might have been Gatherround. Yes, been, might that have, was Gatherround. It might have been. It might oh, have been. Still, that's not really like. F- I was going to say. But um, this is interesting. Brisbane are, ba- Brisbane are back. Well, we'll see if they're back. They've did some good coaching moves. Um, like, well, I mean, having I'd have Charlie Cameron out because Geelong have their own interceptors. Yeah. You got to Coning, Stewart. So just keep Cameron out. Out of there, keep keep putting down her pinch hitting in the ruck. Um, Rainer going up against Rainer was awesome last week. This young cat side is awesome. Jeremy Cameron, can he um, um, unleash? Dom Hawkins will be back in the side. Hawkins, who will be matching up against him? Will they put Andrews? Andrews or Payne? Payne, yep. Andrews was big last week. Andrews was good. Starcevich was good. He was really good. Yeah. Um, they, they just looked like, I know they beat Brit North and gave them mojo, but they beat a really good side. And this is the sort of stuff that can kickstart, really kickstart them. Well, Geelong, they're going into enemy territory. It's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. Who do you think will win? I just think Cameron overturning his ban, that was good. He yeah. had one with suspension, overturned mm-hmm. it. Hipwood, Danaher have found a bit of form, kicking goals between them and early on. Yep. I know you said Brisbane start off very well normally. Yep. yep. So they're going to come out with speed regardless. They did, and they did. They did that especially on yep. Melbourne. They do. They do start well. They start very well, and Geelong do too. But yeah, but I think That's when they're coming up one. against a very mature side like Geelong. They'll be able to nullify that. But the problem with this maturity is they're not that mature in the middle. That is their big issue because you've got. I well, mean, it's not an it's not an issue. They're 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 six and zip. I don't think it's an issue. You've got you've got Brun. 
um, Brunt, Bowes. Um, Blitkov's the most ex- experienced one. It's going to be one. hard um, for them to come up against. Um, I mean, they're coming up. It's a, it's a very different sized. Me sort too. of felt like when they were going in against Adelaide. But different because Adelaide it was it was early in the round. You thought, but with the Adelaide factor, mm. and this Geelong side travels well. I, I know they lost the last the last couple in Brisbane, but they travel well generally. Yeah. What are you thinking? I feel like this 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 round's fuck. Yeah. Sorry, when it's I say this, this crazy. round from a tipping standpoint is absolutely messed. If you can get more than five this week, you're doing you're well. An, you're an incredible tipper, or mm-hmm. as John says, you're a horrible tipper. Mm-hmm. But it works in your favour regardless. Yeah, uh, I think Brisbane. I just think Brisbane. Yeah. They're going to be too good. I don't think it's going to be. It's not. It's going to be close. Yeah, I don't see this being one team being a blowout. They're two very good squads, and they have very good coaching staff that aren't going to let a team just kick away. Sure. So I think Brisbane will get up just because if it was at the if it was at um, GMHBA down at Geelong, this would be the Cattery. Okay. But I just think because it's up there, Brisbane. they've got two wins on the board of the last two games. They're going to carry that momentum. If Dan, and Dan Hur and Hipwood would love it. They know last time they played it was up there. I just feel like they're going to get the win. Okay. What about you? Geelong by 18 points. I just think they're, they're going really nicely. I still think Brisbane are missing... They're not going to be able to do that keepings off that they did against Melbourne, which sides have gone to do. Geelong play a good, high, their you know their half forwards play you know high, high half up. forward, yep. leave the space. Hawkins back in, Cameron's killing it. They travel well. I, I think the Cats by three goals, but it's going it's going to be an actual. It's going to be a cracker. Be a really good game. Like I, there's so many games of the round. <laughs> that brings us over to quite an interesting one. Not the game of the round. But not the game of the round. The the predictable one you would one would assume. Yeah. West Coast and Frio. What's this? They call this the um this the, the derby. derby. The Derby. It's not the even much of a derby. Der- it should be an absolute the, the, shellacking. The Western Derby. I mean, when you look at the form guide on this one, guys, you've got sixteenth playing seventh. Now the Dockers, they should be better than three and two. They've kept the sides when they lose. To pretty much under 73 points and they've only lost by under 10 points both times. They've had a really – they've had a pretty hard run too. West that's, Coast, that's surprised us. well done. Yep. First win in a while. Couldn't even tell you how many games that was. Uh, getting up against Richmond and they were, at, they were over in the West. However, they're not winning this. I don't really – I mean the only promising thing that I really enjoyed seeing last round out of West Coast was Harley Reid. Yeah. Uh, Waterman had an absolute cracking game. Yeah, Yo Yao, whatever you, however you pronounce his name, the commentators say both. He was back in some good form, kicking two, and I think having over 20, 27 touches, I think it was. But Frio just down back. They've got the bat, the number one backman in the league, Pierce, at the moment. The only problem for them would be that firepower down forward. But they've got a great midfield, great backline, and you know they're just gonna they're just gonna have an expedition out there. I reckon. What about what about you, Johnny? What I mean, you yeah, I mean, Frio do this. It would be actually be criminal, I guess. They've got so close against two really good sides on the day. Um, if they drop this one, I'll, um, I'll, I'll give you perspective. Last time they played this derby, Frio won by over a hundred points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think, and I mean, I think they're gonna the the problem with it. How 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 much can they score? But I don't think it's going to matter. They're just going to be too classy. Um, Tim Kelly was going at, what, 30% on the weekend? 35% um, by foot. See, the guy I mean, got the ball. El- Elliot, he got back in form, but he just couldn't. El- couldn't Elliot, Elliot Yo was really good on the weekend too. He's been in good form. But, yeah, I think they Freo are strangling elite sides. Yeah, the best. Freem- the, and this is a derby. Don't think Freeman or – you know how sides can sometimes take – a lower side for granted. No, nah, this, this is, is a, a derby, so I, I actually think Frio, um, yes, yeah, six goals plus. Yeah, and it's good. I mean, Fremantle, we had them so wrong. Uh, I mean... Massively wrong. Luke Jackson, arguably up there with Gorn, you know, contending for that number one spot yeah. as an, and, and De Koning as the number one ruckman in the league. I mean, Pierce down back is just on lock. Luke Ryan, Luke Ryan's too. a star. Fire, and then you've got, I mean, their wingman Fife through the mid. 
O'Meara on the bench. I just love how that's just a name there. And he's, you know, he's a great player too. Brayshaw's killing it. Sarong just averaging a hell of a lot of disposals and doing his job. So it's good to see this team. I just don't think that, yeah. I, I, I mean, I know the only thing, and as we've been saying, Sean Darcy is on the verge of a return. So it's going to be interesting how that, will it work in their favour? Will they win more? Will they be better? Or will, what will happen? It's going to be very, very interesting. But, yeah, no, absolute shellacking over at the West. Agreed. For the Derby. That brings us to another game which a bit more predictable too. Sydney plays the Suns. Swans, uh, well, they, they limped to their bye. They were, they were, they were unstoppable with that yeah. ball movement of the likes of, like, Gordon Campbell Roberts. They almost lost to West Coast. Well, they didn't. Well, almost, they, they, they they were out pressured by Richmond at the MCG, and you and West Coast really gave them a scare. Yeah. Um, they're coming against the Gold Coast Suns, who everyone who do this every single yeah every year. They're at the same point, three and two. I just don't buy them. I don't buy into this side. I just I they're. they're in Sydney? Because Gold Coast can't play outside of Metricon. Yeah. They just can't play outside of Metricon. And how are they going to deal with these ball users? These guys aren't Richmond either. Their pressure ain't as good as Richmond. No. And it's Sydney and Sydney. I just don't I just don't think Miller, Anderson, Humphrey are gonna be good enough for this. Isaac Heaney is absolutely killing it. Um, Warner is killing it. They're going to have no answer for Florin and Blake, um, Blakey off the half-back line. Golden, McInerney. These guys, hey, we're like, these guys, McDo- like. And wait till Pap gets a hold of their back line. I actually reckon um, Swans win by 10 goals. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah. I mean, and Parker potentially might be coming into Correct. the squad too, I think. So. Correct. No, this is a flogging. Now, you... Have told me that the jet, that like everyone else, Gold Coast, they're getting better every year. We do this every year. You, they shouldn't get pumped if they are becoming the side. What do you reckon? So this was actually I was going to actually ask you that question because they're on the moment at the moment on the premiership. They're on the starboard, which is you know almost tipping off to life raft, which basically means you're you're pretty much done for the season. Yeah. <clears throat> now they're eighth. Like you said, three wins, two losses. Their wins don't look as good now when you look at what Adelaide and Richmond have produced. Realistically, I mean, Sydney. When is this this side going to actually... Because they they just can't play away. And everyone telling me how good they were. The Bulldogs who are... It's a big game for them. Big game because when they went and played against the Dogs, who aren't going well, but because it was not in fucking sunny Queensland... Nine goals kicked him in the first quarter. This is going to be embarrassing. Yeah, so my only issue with this one, they played twice last year. Sydney got up both times pretty comfortably. So and before, Sydney weren't good last year. No, so this is this is the issue. It's going to really show how well this Gold Coast team can travel. Can yep. they travel? Can they actually put in a good win? It's interesting now that I think about gather run and how they make you travel to another state to play a full round. It's very interesting how they do that, but maybe it's teaching sides that they want more travel, more kilometres. Are they just copying the NRL? Because, you know, I don't think they're trying to. Trying I don't to, think they're trying to teach them. It's, it's true. <laughs> no, it's probably not at all. You probably just say, "What the fuck?" They're probably going to play somewhere else. Anyway. They're going to. It's. It's going to. It's going to be embarrassing. I don't. It shouldn't be, but. I know you're trying to hold on. I'm trying to hold on. I know you're trying to be optimistic, and I love that about you, but it's not happening. Where's their like? <laughs> no, you just look at their midfield. No, no, this, no, this game's not. They're gonna get. Miller's spanked. a good handy player. Everyone's gonna call me blasphemous saying he's a good handy player, but he doesn't kill sides. He gets Who? a lot of the ball. Um, Miller. Miller. No, he doesn't kill sides. He, I oh, put yeah, him in yeah. the. I put him in the Zach Merritt category. Um, you know, who I will shout out Harley Reid. Uh, Harley Reid. Harley Sports Talk. Right. Because <laughs> he's put Merritt third on his Brownlow watch. 
Who's ranking him third at the moment if in the league? If Zach Merritt wins the Brownlow, there is something wrong with the AFL. He's third. He doesn't fucking damage sides. So against Port, he f- was shit. He just got a lot of the ball because he was in the middle, but he actually did all right last But I guess game. winning the Brownlow, it's, you know, being consistent, doing your awards. So it's a different thing. Yeah. He could true. never be an MVP. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I think like what you said, Gold Coast, their list right now coming up against Sydney, there's a lot of issues, there's a lot of holes there and I think Sydney are going to win this one. I don't – did you say plus 50? 50 10 goals. 60 plus? Yeah. Okay, big shellacking here. Now, this is game of – this is match of the round. North takes Hawks, the battle of the fucking – the water. (laughs) And what we mean by that, these teams are already done for the season. They've checked out. They drowned. They're completely done. This is it. Oh, this is actually biblical. So you've got, when you have form guide guys, you've got 18th playing 17th. What is it? North have them, have won one game in 27. Yeah, they both haven't won at all. Hawthorne, the Hawthorne, the, if, if, if we all right, now we're cutting it, we're like clutching at straws here, trying to add it. Normally when you analyze in this depth, you're analyzing the goats. We're analyzing the shit. Yeah. Um, like Hawthorne have been gallant or valiant or whatever you want to against gallant, play, yeah. like Melbourne, Collingwood, Geelong. They were disgusting against Gold Coast last week. North started okay. Had a not a bad game against GWS with five goals up against Freo. But they have been absolutely destroyed. Um, McKercher could be coming back in. You know what? These sites have copped one of the most... Who, who was... Who decided to play the bottom two shittest teams? Their run... Like, have you looked at the teams oh, that they fucking oh, faced? Oh, Hawthorne's been... But, but what's interesting, I reckon there's more hope in certain spots for North in terms of Sheasel, Yuzanaki... Zohar, um, not Zohar, Larky. But the like, average losing margin's like correct, correct, 50 points. Correct. But Hawthorne give, have a little bit more spunk if we can say it. Yeah. Does Hawthorne have an A grader though? Apart from Warple? Sicily. No, Warple's not, Warple's an, a not an A grader. He's a B minus. Sicily. Sicily can be. No, they don't have an A grader. Who else is in there? Let's, let's, let's just have a quick little look. Who else could you? Nah. Where are they playing? Um, Is it in they are playing Marvel. Oh, you know thank what's God, there's no Mel- conditions. It says Marvel, Melbourne, Wur- Wurundjeri. Yeah, we know, we know. <laughs> Sorry, they've, been, just, they've been doing that for five years. I know, I know, but I'm just like... Who, do, just you, who do you reckon, Josh? It's actually a really hard one. No, nah, I think I think Hawthorne. Go the Hawks. I think I mean they've won the last three against them, against North. Yeah, I, I can't see personally. They've both had incredibly tough draws. I think whoever's doing the fixture but in the you, AFL needs to bloody when you get finish, better. At that. But when you finish, when you're as bad as them, everyone's a hard draw. No, but when I'm okay, I'll go through North, Geelong, Brisbane, Carlton, yeah. Dockers, Giants. That's the top five. That's true. <laughs> okay, let me put it in perspective. Okay, this one, I the, yeah, Hawks yeah, yeah. actually arguably worse. Not worse is it like yeah, 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 yeah. Suns, Collingwood, Geelong, Melbourne, Essendon. You could say Suns and Essendon. Yeah, I get you, I get you, I get you. But, nor- I mean, nor- you know what? Maybe I'm being really hard on North. North have played pretty much top six sides. They've both had hard runs. They've both had hard runs. They've just completely destroyed them. Who have you got? <laughs> Is that Marvel? Yeah. It's a hard, actually, I mean, Hawks is normally, um, the, they normally play at the G. I'm, play, I'm, I'm going North. North by five points. Oh, jeez. That's cool. Very close. And and remember Clarko back against his old side? That is true. I didn't think about Whoever that. Whoever loses this game, surely their coach has to be looked at. If it's a blowout too. If it's a close game, it's a close game. But if one of these sides get fucked. If Zaha comes back. That helps. Zaha. I think... I, I feel like I win. feel like North have more, especially at Eddie had two with players like Sheasel and whatnot using the ball. Um, Dersma, um, I think they, you know, Larky and Curtis. 
I like Hawthorne's spirit though. Yeah, I think um, they've just got that. I think they've got a... They've got a good backline too, Frost and Sicily. I wonder players like Nash and Newcomb just going to start, to, like, you know, getting to what we think they are. By the way, Hardwick, why are they not playing him up forward now? The, he, they moved him. He kicked four goals in the second half. They moved him straight back down back. What's that about? They might do it on the weekend. They're going to have to if they want to win. Yeah, I'm going to go five points north. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is... <laughs> Oh, that was the hardest one. Look, if Zerha comes back, it cha- it changes a lot for. I think North have more to like in terms of the actual for like there. three years away. Like in terms of, like I don't like Hawthorne's store, but I think Hawthorne bit bit more bit more. I guess yeah, just a bit more ruth. You know, just a bit tougher. No, Hawthorne. No, if it was at the MCG or Tassie, I'd probably go Hawthorne. But at Etihad, clean deck, nice and warm for North. If if North, uh, if Hawthorne had Bruce and Gunston, I would say it's Hawthorne. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right, Johnny. I think the, I think North are just going to come out. I think this is going. You know where like West Coast did. They had this hope. They came up against Richmond. They had a few outs. So who's the team with hope? Because they both North. haven't won. North. Hawthorne don't have hope? Mate, they suck. They're coming so up against... North. So what I'm saying is, so I feel like this is how the league goes. West Coast were the worst. Yeah. They've now just said, suck shit, both you guys. For a week, yeah. For a week. Whoever loses, whoever this loses is on the is bottom. Whoever loses is the worst. It's just, it has not Pure won. Pure shit. And I don't think I don't know how that's going to get any better for them because this league is ridiculous at the moment. Like it is so close, and those three teams at the bottom are just not there. If one of these sides gets blown out, the, they 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 need to be looking at what they're doing. Yeah, oh, I'm this. sorry because none of these sides are good. So why it's so hard to pick? Now, if it's a close game, it's a close game. That's yeah, very well, very north north by fifth, north by five. Five points. Did I put my tip in? Have I, have I been neglecting this topic still? I, I like think I said ch- north. I think you said north. Yeah, no, I did say north. I think you said north. Is there anything else that's been happening, Johnny, no, in the AFL? You want to bring I think, up? No. No? No. No, I think we've gone through them all. And no other news. Guys, if you've seen anything happening in the AFL this week, drop it in the comments if you want us to talk about it. Final thoughts? Game of the, the, the game of the round to look at. Collingwood, Port Adelaide. It's unfortunate because it's Saturday day. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. Like if that be, was a I'll night be, game. I'll be watching Carlton GWS at 4.30. Um, it, it is. If you have your weekends, congratulations to you. Seriously, one of the best. That's the best Saturday. You just said Port and Collingwood. Carlton GWS. Carlton GWS and then Brisbane Geelong. And then and then if you, On the Saturday. It, and if you want WA, you got... You know, you got, the, want, you, got the der- you got the derby. Peasants. Well, not peasants, but... Rip, around, will, rip around a footy. Fremantle should shellack them. Sure. But, yes, if you're over in the West, that's going to be a good game. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, and... Ring the fucking bell. See you guys in the next one.